I'm Michael Martin and welcome to the Night Sky, a monthly series that walks you through the best objects and events that you can go out and see under the night sky for the entire year. Whether you're brand new to amateur astronomy or have years or decades of experience, please like this video and consider subscribing to our channel to join our growing community. Now we're going to begin the month of May with one of the easiest and best ways to get into amateur astronomy because it requires absolutely no equipment whatsoever. Let's begin this month by taking a look at the best meteor showers for the month of May. Nothing quite compares to the peace and calm that comes over you as you look up at the sky and try to see faint streaks of light move across it in what we call a meteor shower. On the morning of May 5th, the remnants of Halley's Comet are going to be moving through the upper portions of our atmosphere, and they're going to put on quite a show for some of us, particularly for those of you that live in the southern hemisphere. To see this meteor shower, go outside on the morning of May 5th and look towards the east. There you will find the planet Saturn, and to the left of that we have the constellation Aquarius, which the Eta Aquarids appear to emanate from. Expect 5 to 10 meteors per hour from this shower if you live in the northern hemisphere, but the farther south you live, the more meteors you will see, with numbers possibly reaching up to 30 meteors per hour. To maximize the Eta Aquarids, particularly for those of you that live in the southern hemisphere, get away from light pollution, give yourself at least an hour or two to enjoy the show, and relax and look at the widest portion of space that you can while laying down in a blanket or relaxing in a lounge chair. If you're able to get out and see any part of this meteor shower, be sure to let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. It's a busy month for the moon with a total lunar eclipse coming up later this month. But before we get to that, let's start by looking at the phases of the moon to help you plan your observing or imaging sessions for the month of May. We begin with the first quarter moon, which will happen on May 8th. It's during this time that I like to go out with a pair of binoculars or a telescope to study the detailed surface of the moon with incredible shadows being cast across its surface. On the night of May 16th, the full moon rises at sunset and shines down on us for the entire night. The last quarter moon follows on May 22nd, and the new moon of the month hits on May 30th. For lunar events this month, we have a total lunar eclipse. During these events, the Earth moves in between the sun and the moon, casting its shadow slowly across the lunar surface for an incredible event for us to experience and image, culminating in the moon being completely covered by the Earth's shadow and turning a blood red. Plan on going out to see this event beginning on the night of May 15th around 10.30 p.m., when the darkest part of the Earth's shadow known as the umbra begins to make its way across the lunar surface. The culmination of this will be totality around 11.30 p.m when the moon will be darkened and will slowly turn to a blood red, with the maximum eclipse occurring around 12.11 a.m. But be sure to check your local date and time for where you live around the world. My lunar observing challenge for you this month is to go outside and experience this total lunar eclipse. If you're able to, try to take a picture of it with your cell phone or your DSLR camera. And if you'd like to, I would love to see your image by sharing it with me over at Late Night Astronomy on Instagram. Now let's move on to the planets of our solar system. Most of these are jumbled together in the early morning sky, but because of that, we've got some incredible close approaches of several of them to talk about this month from the beginning of the month to the end. But let's start first with the closest planet to the Sun, Mercury. Mercury starts off in the northwest sky right after sunset. But as we get later into the month, it will move closer to the Sun 
and then transition to becoming an early morning target by the end of May. As we switch to the early morning sky, Venus continues to dominate in the southeast and is a wonderful target for the naked eye, binoculars, or a telescope. In fact, one of the best events of the month is going to be happening between April 30th and May 1st, when Venus and Jupiter move incredibly close to each other from our perspective in what we call a conjunction. On April 30th, I'll be able to fit both of these planets into my field of view at 100 times magnification through my telescope. And on May 1st, their closeness is still impressive, and they'll both comfortably show up through my 25 millimeter eyepiece at 50 times magnification. These are two incredibly bright objects to be in conjunction with each other, and they're gonna put on quite a show April 30th and May 1st. Don't feel like you have to have any equipment to go out and observe these and enjoy them either. They'll be fun to look at with just the naked eye. If you do have binoculars or a telescope, or if you're able to get an image of this, please be sure to let me know about your experience and share any images that you take over with me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you were able to catch of this incredible conjunction. Moving on to Mars, it continues to travel higher into the southeast sky as we await its close approach to Earth for some amazing views later this year. Like Venus, it too will be making a close approach to a major planet this month when it approaches Jupiter on May 28th and May 29th. This event will also have these two planets viewable in the same field of view through low-powered eyepieces. Saturn continues to become an incredible morning target as it rises higher into the sky for better views just prior to sunrise and skips right over the moon on May 22nd. Uranus is practically unobservable this month as it remains close to the sun in its present orbit from our perspective. We finish our tour of the planets this month with Neptune, which has a close pass to Mars on May 18th as it continues to move higher into the sky each morning. As we leave our solar system behind, let's take a look at some of the best deep sky objects for the month of May. Now these are gonna be the most challenging things to see on our list, and in most cases they are gonna require a pair of binoculars or a telescope. To begin with the spring sky, Let's orient ourselves with the major constellations that you can go out and see with just the naked eye. As we look up, we're going to come across Ursa Major, Butes, Leo, Cancer, Virgo, and Hydra. Within these constellations are the impressive deep sky objects that we're going to go out and hunt down this month. Let's begin by looking up and finding the Ursa Major constellation. Let's start at the Big Dipper and then move our way over to the constellation Cancer. This will help us find one of my favorite open clusters, M44, the Beehive Cluster. This object is one of the few on this list that is visible to the naked eye, with roughly 1,000 stars making it up. While you're viewing the Beehive Cluster, move on over to M67, another fine open cluster in this constellation. Let's end May with a popular collection of galaxies known as the Leo Triplet. This collection of three spiral galaxies is a popular target for astrophotography and can be a nice view in larger telescopes under darker skies as well. I was recently able to image the Leo triplet, and I was pleased at the detail that came out even with just shooting these small galaxies at 135mm focal length. I've got a detailed video on several more deep sky objects in the spring sky that you can view and image, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. Those are just some of the best objects and events that you can get out and see in our incredible night sky for the month of May. I'm sure there's something I left off this list that you're looking forward to getting out to see, and if that's the case, 
please be sure to let me know what that object is and anything that you're able to get out to observe an image in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.